So, yes, we indeed uh, had uh, a workshop uh, in St. Petersburg. It was the first time that we had a workshop on the new methodology that was developed in the Institute of the Human Brain, where I'm sitting now in the, uh, at my uh, study. And uh, this uh, lab is located just 200 meters from the lab where Ivan Pavlov carried his uh, research on conditioned reflexes. Uh, at the workshop, uh, we invited uh, people who were using our methodology from different countries, from Norway, from Germany, from the United States, uh, from, uh, from Israel, so from quite many countries, all they came and we had fun. So we uh, were talking about the methodology, how we can uh, uh, progress in this approach. Uh, we, were, we were planning several experiments, uh, how to, uh, to make sense of some independent components of event related potentials uh, that uh, we know then we can separate from uh, the raw ear piece in the brain so we had fun we had fun we were we had we have good friends and uh, we are moving forward uh, with the developing uh, and with uh, spreading our methodology in different countries Great. So this the format of the workshop was different from the normal workshop. It's yeah, like, of course, of course. The, 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 the format was uh, different. It was a, a user meeting, mid-SAR user meeting. So those who used uh, the equipment that is produced by mid-SAR company. And actually, the, the, the workshop was organized by uh, the mid -SAR company, by Alexander Groszewski. So he was in charge of organizing the workshop. I just simply uh, came yeah. at, uh, <laughs> to be one of the presenters in the workshop. So we had, uh, 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 you know, the, the a presentation was made uh, by some people like Jan Bruna from uh, uh, from Norway, like Ger Ergren also from Norway, like uh, Marina Pronina from our institute. So th th beside my talk there were uh, many other, Andy Mueller, uh, he actually started uh, the workshop, he uh, told about uh, his new development, uh, about uh, new software for report generation. Uh, and uh, so, and uh, he brought with him uh, two young colleagues, uh, Alex Popashev and uh, John Kadrian. So they also <coughs> made presentation about uh, this uh, new development of the HBI database. So it was it was a nice workshop. In, in, was in, in the middle of the white nights. Yes, yes, white nights is for sure. Um, beautiful. It's quite an amazing experience. Staying yeah. up till twelve and feeling like it's still six p.m. Yeah, that's great. true. But you know what uh, was amazing is to see advanced users and talk to them about the uh, method that they have their own you know, validation of. It. That's that was also very valuable. Well, I personally have no doubt that uh, the methodology works. Yeah, the, the the only uh, uh, the only problem that we have now is uh, that people would start using it, and it's not easy to to understand the methodology. The uh, you have to know quite a lot about the brain, about how the brain process information, what kind of uh, brain areas are involved in uh, executive function, what kind of areas are involved in the visual processing, what kind of executive function exists. So you have to know quite a lot of things in order to use this methodology. It looks like standards in the uh, clinic are growing. Yeah, because the, uh, there is no satisfaction in psychiatry with current treatment of it. 
and uh, new methodologies controversial because they don't have enough evidence. So, what, to your opinion, um, how what's the future for uh, new methodologies? How quickly they can change the current levels? Well, I think that the, the, the new methodology uh, we already start started using it, uh, and uh, right now we're using it in Norway, in uh, St. Olaf uh, Hospital, in the clinic of St. Olaf Hospital. Uh, hospital. We're also using it uh, here in our institute. Uh, and uh, we're using it in Zurich uh, at uh, um, uh, Andy Miller Clinic. And also, uh, and uh, Andy Miller has a clinic in Kur. And we open a new clinic now in Zurich, uh, in which uh, people are assessed. I mean, the people who are coming, uh, it could be children with attention deficit disorder, or people with schizophrenia, whatever. They are assessed by our methodology. And they are giving recommendations for medication, for treatment, using different methods of neurotherapy. So, it works not only in our institute, but it works in many other countries. And hope, hope that soon we will have similar hub, similar center in the United States, uh, in uh, in California, and we are having uh, the, this hub in Australia uh, with uh, Rustam. Uh, Yamash and Nirida Saunders uh, as uh, our uh, colleagues who are working uh, in this field. Right, so, um, well, that's good. So, obviously, um, it's so nothing will stop now to grow further. But definitely, and nothing will stop us. Nothing will stop us. And there is nothing in the world that we cannot do. <laughs> thank you, Yuri. So, and thank uh, you. Before you cut up, how is this? better or more advanced than the traditional QEG? What information does it give you which you cannot obtain from the traditional? Well, uh, you know, traditional EEG uh, gives you the information about how the cortex is self-regulated. And it doesn't give you any information how the, the brain, how the cortex react uh, to stimuli in certain task conditions. And uh, uh, quite often, especially with uh, schizophrenia, with uh, obsessive compulsive disorder patients, with depression patients, we see quite normal EEG, no problems with EEG. So EEG is uh, very nice regulated in this uh, um, patient, but the ear piece is abnormal. And, uh, it, and more, it's abnormal specifically in some disorders. For example, a schizophrenic patient, they have a specific profile of uh, uh, brain dysfunction according to ear piece. OCD patient, they, they have a, a special type of dysfunction. Depressed patient, a special type of dysfunction. So we, the, and the knowing uh, what part of the cortex is hyper functioning, then you can actually focus on this area and you can do a TMS, a transcranial drug current stimulation, or any other neuro, neuro, uh, neurotherapy uh, on this particular uh, year. And uh, and actually, this is a kind of uh, biomarker, we call it it's neuromarker of, uh, of disease. So uh, when we talk about uh, biomarker, uh, we are talking about not a single parameter, we are talking about profiles of uh, uh, indexes of the different stages of information processing in the brain including occipital, the temporal, parietal, pre different prefrontal areas. So having this information, having these neuromarkers uh, of uh, functioning these brain areas 
we can tell about the profile uh, of the patient and we can tell uh, what kind of prognosis, what kind of treatment uh, we, we can use in this particular patient. So the medicine is going to be in individually trained, to trail. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Yuri. Thank you.